Alright guys, today we are going to talk about increasing and decreasing of a graph. And maximum and minimum values. So, first of all, definition. A function f is increasing on an interval if f of x1 is less than f of x2 for all x1 less than x2 on that interval. What does that mean exactly? I know it's kind of a confusing definition. I'm going to draw a graph in just a second and word it in a different way, um, and it'll make more sense. Um, but first, also definition for decreasing, f is decreasing on that interval if f of x1 is greater than f of x2 uh, for all x1 less than x2. Okay, so what does this mean exactly? Let's draw a graph really quick. Just going to kind of make up some functions here. All right, so what are the elements of these things that we need to include? Well, we need an x1 and an x2, where x1 is less than x2. So these x's are going to go on my x-axis. Um, if x1 is less than x2, should it be to the left or the right? Should be to the left. So let's put x1 over here, x2 over here. Just so that we don't get confused, let's um, give these each name. So I'm going to call this function f and I'm going to call this function g. Um, so where is f of x1? Well, x1 is here, right? So we just want to find out what is the vertical value of f at x1. So that would be here, right? So this point is x1, f of x1. So the y value is f of x1. What is f of x2? Right here, right? This point is x2, f of x2. f of x2. Is f of x2 greater than or less than f of x1? It's greater than, right? It's a lot higher on the y-axis than f of x1. So we do, it is true, that f of x1 is less than f of x2, right? Because we've moved up in order for us to get from f of x1 to f of x2. Let's look at g. Where is g of x1? Well, right here. So we've got x1 and g of x1. 
and where is g of x2 right here we've got x2 g of x2 x1 is less than x2 and is g of x1 greater than or less than g of x2? It's greater than, right? So we have these two facts. We have that f of x1 is less than f of x2 and we have that g of x1 is greater than g of x2. What does this mean based on our definition from above? It means that we're increasing. If g of x1 is greater than g of x2, what does that mean? It means that we're decreasing. All right, how can we word this in a way that makes a little bit more sense? Well, what's going on here? So for both of these, we're talking about this x1 and this x2, where x1 is less than x2. x1 being less than x2 just means that we're moving from left to right along the graph, correct? We are looking at what's going on as our x values are getting bigger. So as we move along the graph from left to right, again, that's the x1 is less than x2, if output values are getting larger which is f of x1 is less than f of x2 the function is called increasing if they're getting smaller meaning f of x1 is greater than f of x2 It's called decreasing. So as we move along the graph from left to right, we want to know, am I getting smaller or am I getting larger? Great. So one thing to note is that not all graphs are going to be always increasing or always decreasing. Sometimes we have um, graphs that do both at different places. So let's look at an example of that. Let's say we've got something like this.
All right, let's say we're looking at this graph. So where is F increasing? So looking at the graph, what this is asking is, as we move from left to right, where are we getting larger? So as I'm looking, I'm moving from left to right. Here I'm clearly going down. So that is not a part where I'm increasing. Once I get past this point here, where we've scooped down, I do start to go up. So definitely this part is somewhere where I'm increasing. Increasing, increasing, increasing until I get here. This part, my output values are getting smaller. And then past this valley, they start getting larger again. So what portions here are where we're increasing. Looks like this piece and this piece. Okay, so we know we want to identify these parts of the graph, but how are we gonna do that exactly? Well, let's take a short aside really quickly. When identifying a piece of a graph. We want to describe it using X values. Why would that be the case? Well, if we think back to our last lesson, we talked about how sometimes we might have repeated Y values, but we can never have repeated X values. We can't have more than one point on the graph with the same X value. So if we are talking about one particular x value, we're never going to be talking about more than one place. The way I like to explain this kind of visually is, let's think about this, right? If I'm trying to coordinate a camping trip with a friend, I'm not going to say, hey, meet me at 2,500 feet, right? Because I could be talking about any of these spots, right? I would say, hey, meet me in Asheville or meet me in Boone, right? Because there are lots of places where the mountains are 2,500 feet in altitude, right? But there's only one Asheville, there's only one Boone, there's only one Linville Falls, etc. Right? Similarly, on a graph, if I name something by the y value, Right, if I say, I'm looking at the point where y equals, I don't know, maybe this is five. If I say where y equals five, I could be talking about this point, this point, this point, this point, or this point. So if I'm trying to name this point, I need to talk about this x value. Let's say maybe it's seven, right? I need to say, if I say x equals 7, this is the only place I could be talking about. If I say where y equals 5, then I could be talking about any of these places. So if I'm trying to name this point in particular, I have to identify it using the x values. Does that make sense? So for the same reason, when we're identifying these pieces of the graph, we're going to identify it using the x values. So, what x values describe this chunk? Well, where does it start? It starts at negative 6, right? And we move all the way to, what is the x value of this point? 1, right? So, our first interval 
where we're increasing is negative 6 to 1. Why did I use parentheses here? Well, just a fact, we always use parentheses with increasing and decreasing. Oops. Why is that? Well, the problem is that I can't really say whether I'm increasing or decreasing at a single point. I can only say whether I'm increasing or decreasing on an interval. Right, because we need to be able to compare multiple points. So because I can't really say at this point I'm increasing or decreasing, we don't want to include those individual points, right? That might be confusing. You don't necessarily really need to know that. All you need to know is that we always use parentheses when we're talking about increasing and decreasing in particular. Okay, so we've done one chunk, but we are not finished, right? We also need to name this part. So we have a second piece. Where does this piece start? Well, we're moving from left to right, remember? So we start at 3, right? That's our first x value. And we continue all the way to what? Well, is there an end point for this? No, right? It continues forever. So we are going to continue all the way to infinity. Great. Okay. Where is f decreasing? Well, for this graph, we've already written our arrows, right? So where are our output values getting smaller? Well, probably where our arrows are pointing downwards, right? So this piece of the graph and this piece of the graph. How can we name those? Well, we want to use the x values, of course. What is the starting x value of this piece of the graph? Is there one? There isn't one, right? We know that it extends forever in, the, in this direction, right? So. There's no beginning x value, so we want to start at negative infinity. Where does it end as we're moving from left to right? It ends here. What is the x value for this point? Negative 6. And again, we have a second chunk, so we want to um, name this second interval as well. It starts at this point, which we will identify with its x value, which is 1. And it ends where this point with the x value of, ne of 3. Great. So these are our intervals where we're increasing and decreasing on this graph. Okay, let's look at an example really quickly. All right, these are a few examples from the lab manual, the lesson interpreting graphs, increasing slash decreasing. I'm going to start with, this is number seven. All right, we want to identify where we're increasing and decreasing. As we move from left to right along this graph, as we kind of trace, where are we moving upwards, right? Where are our output values getting larger. Looks like along this first portion, right? So as we get started, we're moving up. So where does that start? Well, we are starting at negative infinity and increasing all the way until we get to the, that first peak, right? How do we identify that peak? with its x value. What is the x value of that point? Negative 
eight, five, nine, four, really long. Okay, and then as we move past that point, we start moving downwards, right? So that is not a place where we are increasing. That is actually a place where we are decreasing. So if we want to, we can go ahead and write that interval in uh, for the decreasing portion. So we are decreasing from that point, which again we identify with the x value negative 1.7854. And we stop decreasing at the sort of valley underneath, right? What is that point? The x value of that point is 5.78594. Sweet. Okay, and then as we move further to the right, we see that we are increasing again, right? Our output values are getting larger, moving from left to right. So we include that last chunk of the graph for increasing. So union, we're starting at x value 5.784, seven, sorry, 78594. And keeps continuing forever. How do we say keeps continuing forever? Infinity. Oops, I did it out of order. Sorry, y'all. So that was number seven. Um, let's look at, really quick, number six. Increasing and decreasing. So as we start from the leftmost point, we move to the right, we're immediately starting by moving downwards, right? So we start off decreasing. So we start at negative infinity. Where do we stop decreasing? So what's going on at negative three? At negative three, we've been sort of sloping downwards, right? And then at negative three, we sort of level off. In that piece where we level off, in that piece that's horizontal, are we decreasing there? Are we increasing there? Well, let's think about our definition, right? We want our output values to be getting specifically smaller, right? We want f of x2 to be less than f of x1. So are we getting smaller? Does equal to count? So since our output values are staying the same, we are not getting smaller, so we are not decreasing. So we stop decreasing at the x value negative three. Again, this horizontal line, are we increasing? Same thing. Our definition for increasing says that we need to be getting bigger. Our output values need to be getting bigger. So since they're staying the same, this part is not increasing either. So when do we start increasing? We start moving upwards at that point, three, three. So our x value there is three, and we continue to infinity. Great, and last but not least, number eight. Okay, so where do we start increasing here. First of all, take a second, identify what pieces of the graph as we move from left to right are increasing. So identify sort of visually for yourself what pieces of the graph we want to identify. It's the pieces of the graph that are sort of sloping this way, right? So how do we identify those with the x values? Let's write down those intervals really quickly. So increasing, we're moving from left to right. That first one starts at x at that lowest point on the graph, right? So we're starting at um, the x value of that point is negative 3.94. 
and it continues to that little peak, that small peak, um, the x value of that point is negative 1.04. Okay, where does the next portion start, right? The last piece where we're increasing is, is that piece on the very rightmost part of the graph. That piece starts at the x value of that point there, that second lowest value is 1.22 and continues all the way to what? Infinity, right? Great. Where are we decreasing? Take a second, identify where we're decreasing. The parts of the graph where we're decreasing should be sort of sloped in this way. So um, that's that first chunk on the very left. So where does that interval start? Well, we're coming from off the graph. So negative infinity all the way to, again, that lowest point on the graph, which we will identify with its x value, negative 3.94. Then we have that second chunk, so we want to draw the union. We start at that peak, and we're going to that second lowest valley, right? So we're starting at the x value, negative 1.04, and continuing all the way to that point, 1.22. All right, so we've talked about increasing and decreasing. Now let's talk about max and min. So definition, a local maximum max for short of F occurs when F changes from increasing to decreasing. Um, again, we'll look at this in just a second. Let me get down the second definition. A local Minimum, min for short, of f occurs when f changes from decreasing to increasing. All right, so let's look back at our example from before. So we had this graph. For our previous example, we said we were increasing at this portion and this portion, and we were decreasing at the non-highlighted places, right? So as we move from left to right along the function, where do we change from increasing to decreasing? Well, here we're increasing and then we're decreasing. So it looks like maybe this is a local max, right? We've moved from increasing, we're increasing here, and then we are decreasing. So we have a local max at the point one seven. Notice this does look a lot like an interval, right? That's one of the downfalls of conventional math notation is that points look a whole lot like intervals with excluded endpoints. Um, but we want to be able to recognize the difference between those things using context. So we know that a local max is going to occur at a point, so we know we're talking about a point here. Okay, so do we have any local minimums here? 
Well, are we ever changing from decreasing to increasing? Let's check it out. So we trace along the graph from left to right. We are decreasing and then all of a sudden we start increasing, right? So it looks like this is a local minimum. So we have a local min at the point negative six, negative five. And so we continue tracing along the graph. We are increasing and then we change to decreasing. So this is our local max again. But then we're decreasing and increasing again. So looks like this is a local min. So we have a local min also here at three, four. Because these are points, we're going to separate them with a comma instead of a union, right? Unions are what we use to join intervals together. Um, because these are not intervals, we're going to separate them with a comma. Let's look back at our examples. So for number seven, do we have any local maxes or mins? Well, as we move along the graph, we said we're increasing on that first chunk and then decreasing in the middle, right? So we do change from increasing to decreasing. So we have a local max at that peak, right? That point is negative 1.78594. With the y value 37.6326. It's a long point. Do we have any local minimums here? Well, then we are decreasing on that middle chunk and then we are increasing on that rightmost chunk. So we do have a local min. It's that valley at the point 5.78594. With the y value negative 16.6326. Awesome. Number six. Do we have a local max here? Well, on that first chunk, we are decreasing, right? Until we get to that point negative 33. And then we are what? On that horizontal portion, are we increasing or decreasing? We are neither, right? So we change from decreasing to neither. So we are not changing from decreasing to increasing. So this is not a local minimum. Then we continue across that horizontal part and we get to that point three, three, positive three, three. And we are changing from neither to increasing. So we are not changing from decreasing to increasing. So this is not a local min. So we actually have neither a local max nor a local min. None. And none. All right, last one, number eight. All right, so on that left portion, what's going on? As we move from left to right, we are getting smaller. We are moving down. So we are decreasing. Then as we continue, we hit that point negative three. We hit that sort of valley and then we begin moving up again. So we are decreasing and then increasing. So that lowest point there is what? A local min. So negative 3.94, negative 48.13 is a local minimum. So then we are increasing, we hit that little peak, and we begin to decrease again. That is a local what? Max. 
So we have a local max at negative 1.04, y value 12.02. So after that point, we are decreasing as we move from left to right until we hit that second valley, which is at the point 1.22. Negative 19.06. That is our second local min. Okay, looking back at the notes, let's do a couple more definitions. If f of c is greater than or equal to f of x for all x, then f of c is the absolute maximum of f. Definition, if f of c is less than or equal to f of x for all x, then f of c is the absolute minimum of f. In other words, f of c is just some y value. And f of x for all x is just uh, all other y values. So, so what this is saying is if some y value is greater than or equal to all other y values, then that y value is the absolute maximum of f. That's all we're saying here. Similarly, um, if some y value is less than or equal to all other y values, then that y value is the absolute minimum of f. Example, let's look at our example from above one more time. Do we have a y value that's smaller than all other y values on this graph, that's lower than all other y values on this graph? We do, right? This guy right here is smaller than all other y values, right? This is the lowest point on the graph. So this y value is negative 5, and that is our absolute minimum. Absolute minimum is negative 5. Absolute minimum is asking us what is our lowest y value on the graph. Do we have an absolute maximum? Let's check it out. Well, if we look up here, is there any y value that's larger than all other y values here? Well, we have these arrows going upwards, right? So what does that mean that the largest y value is? Is there one? Well, let's say my largest y value is the biggest number I can think of. I don't know. Maybe the maximum is a million. Well, if we're increasing forever, then at some point we're going to hit a million and one, right? So there's something that's bigger than a million. So then is a million and one our absolute max? No, because we're going to hit a million and two, right? So there actually is no y value that's larger than all other y values. So our absolute maximum does not exist. All right, let's check out 
our examples. Absolute max. Do we have one? That peak on the left hand side, is that our largest y value? 37.6326, is that our largest y value? Is that larger than all other y values on the graph? No, it is the largest for that part of the graph, which is why it's a local maximum. But on the right hand side of the graph, we extend upwards forever, right? So there is no absolute max, it does not exist. Absolute min. Is there a point that's smaller than all of the points on the graph? Is negative 16.6326 the, the smallest y value? It's not, right? Because if we look to the left, the graph extends lower than that point forever. So there also is no absolute minimum. All right, number six, is there an absolute maximum? There is not, right? There's no absolute maximum here. We are extending upwards, both to the left and the right, um, forever. So there's no absolute max. Absolute min. Is there a y value that's smaller than all other y values on the graph? Is there a lowest point on this graph? Kind of, right? It's definitely not one point. There's lots of points that hit the same y value, but the lowest y value is three. So an absolute min or max doesn't necessarily have to be one single point. It could be a lot of different points. Um, but the y value is still the same, right? Okay. Number eight. Absolute max. Again, similar to all the other ones we've looked at. There is no absolute max here, right? So we do not have an absolute max because we are extending up to infinity for all of these. Is there an absolute min? Is there a lowest y value? Yes, totally. Absolute minimum occurs at that lowest valley, which has the y value, what? Negative 48.13. Awesome. Sometimes, sometimes, you'll be asked to identify um, an absolute max or min with an or ordered pair, right, with a point. So if you are asked for that, so in this case, that point would be, right, the y value is negative uh, 48.13. The point would be negative 3.94, negative 48.13. Okay, last thing that I want to make a note of. Let's say I look at this example. Let's say I have this strain little, let's say I have this line segment. And this point is negative six, negative four, and this point is five, positive three.
what is my absolute max here? Is there a y value that's larger than all the other y values? Yes, totally, right? This point is the highest point on the graph. The y value is 3. So our absolute max is y equals 3. If it asks for a point, our point would be 5, 3. Absolute min. Do we have an absolute min here? Is my absolute min y equals negative 4? Does our graph have output at y equals negative 4? It doesn't, right? So y equals negative 4 is not a y value that our graph has, so it can't be our absolute min. Should I say, oh, yeah, my absolute min is negative 9.3? Well, if I zoom in on that point, we're also going to hit negative 3.92 and negative 3.99 and negative 3.999. We're going to hit every y value up to negative 4 except for negative 4. There's not a next lowest number to negative 4. So there is no absolute min here and this does not exist. Absolute extrema extrema sort of extrema, which is the word for multiple extremes, so an absolute extreme, which is, so extrema is a fancy word for maxes and mins. Can occur at endpoints. Local extrema cannot. Right, at this endpoint, this is an absolute maximum, but it's not a local maximum, right? Because we are increasing over here, but we are nothing on this side. So we can't say that this is a local max because we're not changing from increasing to decreasing. We would need to be decreasing on this side in order for this to be a local max. Okay, that's all I have for you guys today. Um, thanks for watching.